address this concept quickly. If anyone in this room is looking for an instructor, a drill instructor, a sergeant or lieutenant to get you through this academy, get up and get out now. It's not going to happen. I'm not here to get you through the academy. That's not my function. It's not my job. My job is to place obstacles in front of you. It's your job to develop a process and how to get through those obstacles and move forward. My job is to make things uncomfortable. Uncomfort, discomfort promotes change, promotes better habits. From there, it's up to you whether you develop the self-discipline to sustain those habits moving forward. Make sense? Yes, yes sir. sir. If you're looking from the outside, for outside factors to get you through this academy, do not come back on the 8th. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Hello, and welcome to Bare Bones Leadership. My name is Dave Thompson, and on today's episode... I'd like to get into what we do and how we can support your leadership or manage management or frontline leaders or bosses or whatever situation you might be in. How can you support them? Now, to jump right into things, I guess in, in my world, we kind of, or I kind of, categorize the leaders, managers, bosses into their own little categories. And that's individual dependent, right? About, And that has a lot to do with how they carry themselves, what their approach is. At the end of the day, that seems real nuanced and complex. At the end of the day, the bottom line is, are they effective or are they ineffective? And that way of thinking can be linked on, on many levels. In a results-based world, are they effective in completing the overall organizational goal or are they ineffective? Because they could be very effective in hitting all the marks, knocking out all the objectives, and fulfilling the goals, fulfilling the mission statements. They could be great at that. At the same time, they could be the most ineffective leaders, right? They could be the most ineffective personnel managers, or schedulers, or managers, organizers. It, it, we could go down so many rabbit holes. But at the end of the day, how do you support them? Right? How, what's, what's an approach that we can take to support them? We can look at this a couple of ways. We can play the Monday morning quarterback and, and nitpick and sharpshoot everything that our team leaders, frontline leaders, middle, mid-level managers, all the way up to the top dog. We can sit back and sharpshoot every decision, every step, everything across the board. And shit, that's easy, right? That's... I wish I could tell you I've never done that Be because I do. I, I definitely do. Um, and quickly realize how ineffective that makes me. How much time, resource, and energy I've wasted on, on those insignificant things because that's taken away from my priorities, right? So the first thing I should be doing is leading myself daily making myself the most effective, influential team member I can possibly be. Because that 
is going to be a resource for the overall organizational goal because our priorities, again, are the organizational goal, the overall mission statement. That's the number one priority um, above anything and everything, above the ineffective leadership, the effective leadership, the ineffective team members, mid-level managers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The overall goal above all the other petty shit is that goal and fulfilling that goal and that mission statement. That's above anything and everything. For me to be effective in doing that, I have to lead myself daily. That means employing the 11 principles of leadership, and that is leading others and self-leadership. So I have to take responsibility, right? I have to know myself, do the no-shit self-assessment, and seek self-improvement. I have to always be looking to develop myself, to stay humble, do that no-shit self-assessment, realize and recognize when I'm falling off on all the important things, such as taking care of myself, mind, body, spirit, to going in with a good attitude, distancing myself from the gossip and, and petty bullshit that goes on, and and to do things to the best of my ability given the totality of the circumstances, right? That's what we're looking to do, or that's what I need to do myself. And and do we fall off? Absolutely, all the time. And it should, you should fall off, right? We're, we're fucking human beings. We're going to fall off. It, it's 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 a marathon, not a sprint. We're in it for the long game, not for the short short term, fast ascent all the way up. That does that's you're losing out, right? At the end of the day, you're losing out, right? So with that. I need to be technically and tactically proficient, right? And that ties in with self-improvement. So I ha always try to have to be better at, uh, I mean, ultimately try to improve all my skills. I can only do that effectively one skill at a time. I'm not one of these, you know, multitaskers and so forth and so on. So I have to take small bites and, and do what I can to, to improve technically and tactfully um, at one task at a time. Um, take responsibility for all, all your actions. Own it. Right, wrong, or indifferent, or how people perceive it as being right, wrong, and, or indifferent. Make the best decisions based on all the available information at the time, and then take action. Right. I'm I am phenomenal at overanalyzing, right, over researching and, and that leads to lack of action. There's only so much time in the day. If I choose to spend that time researching, analyzing, looking up things, looking for the perfect time or the perfect spot. Or, well, you know, my my perfect opportunity, it, it just doesn't exist, right? So be actionable. Be actionable. Take those lessons. Take those, those failures. Learn from them. Improve on the next time. Set the example, right? Set the example for your team. Be, be the best team member that you could possibly be. Be the most effective, I should say. Because... Um, being the best is, ba is standards-based. Everyone has their own opinion of what the best is, right? What, what's the measure of success there? Um, be effective. Be the most effective. And, and that, that will set the example for the team, your, your subordinates, if you have them, um, so forth and so on. Um, know the people you work with. Look out for their welfare. And that includes... Your leadership or managers know them, understand where they're coming from, understand their um, their background, understand that they're working under 
certain parameters that more than likely are different than the parameters that you're working under. Maybe they're, they're pressured at different levels, levels that you don't see. Understand where they might be coming from and try to have a little, more, little bit of an open mind when, when dealing with them. And look out for their welfare, right? If they make a decision, support it. Not because you like them, not because you might not even respect them, but support their decision because that in their position, their position requires them to make a decision, right? Whether it's an effective decision or an ineffective decision. You, you're a team. It, it's, it's all or nothing. It's a whole. If he or she makes a decision, support it. And then if it's an ineffective decision, you're all eating it. You all benefit from the lesson of that failure. Or you all benefit from the results of it being effective. You can't have it both ways. You can't take everything that comes with a very effective decision and you know, fulfilling an objective, you can't take that and not take the shit that comes with an ineffective decision or a failure. You can't have it both ways. It's a package deal because you are a team, right? So keep that in mind. Um, keep people informed, right? That goes top to bottom, bottom to top. Keep people informed. If you're behind on something or, or you're not up to speed on something, communicate that, right? If, if, you, if you are the weak link and you know that just by uh, maybe a directive given or, or a, an assignment and you're just like, holy fuck, this is out of my wheelhouse or I'm not up to speed on this new uh, technique, tactic or procedure, or, or this new rule change or policy change or the way we're doing things, if you know that, speak up, right? Run that up. Run that up the chain, right? At the worst case, what have you done? You've identified a, a weakness, and, and who gives a fuck if it's your weakness, right? It, it's it's got to get dealt with, and it, it's got to get um, situated. So if you've identified it, now you can be a part of making that ineffectiveness an effectiveness. Um, and, and it, again, it, and then if you don't understand something, communicate that. And make sure the communication is going from the sender to the receiver and back to the sender so the, the original sender knows that that message was received, right? It's a three-part process. Communication is a three-part process. And that's a whole different rabbit hole that um, I highly recommend that everyone listening, you know, take a look at. And, and that, that's a skill. It's a skill set. Communication is definitely a skill set, and, and it should be developed and, and sharpened for sure. Um, you, know, under, you know, ensure that the task is understood, supervised, and accomplished. And, and that's, again... If you're communicating that to subordinates, that's one thing. But if you're a subordinate, right, un unsure, again, that you understand it, that somebody is double-checking and looking it over, and, and that it's done, right? Um, develop a sense of responsibility. If somebody gives you a task, take that responsibility seriously and, and make it happen. The... Some people are not as independent and don't take as much pride in working independently and, and doing and, and um, completing tasks on their own. And I think that might be the, the satisfaction of 
working independently and, and working through something without needing supervision, right? And then some people maybe aren't as confident and maybe their self-esteem is a little bit lower and they they feel like they need that supervision, right? They need that safety net. Um, in, in my opinion, fall in love with the process. It's the process that is never ending, right? If you think about it, it's a never ending process. It's never going to stop. The process is the process. And the more you fight it, and, and, and are unaccepting of the process and are kind of bitching about it and, and are always looking for the result. Well, the result is temporary because once you hit the result, you have to reset and look for the next step, the next result. You know, what's, what's the next thing that's coming down the pipe? Whereas if you focus on the process, the process isn't going anywhere. Embrace that suck. If it's a suck to you, embrace it. Right? Wrap you wrap your arms around that bitch and 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 get it in. It's the process of of action, the actionable process rather than the outcome. The outcome is going to be the outcome. It it's going to be whatever it's going to be. The process is, you have you have a say in the process, right? You can make it miserable, miserable and, and tedious, or you can have it challenge you, right? You can take it as a challenge and, and you know, meet that challenge. Or if it gets the better of you, now you've learned something. It's a win across the board, right? Make sound and timely decisions, Right, man. <laughs> Make a fucking decision. Right? It, it, and and the, these are all time dependent, too. If, if this is, you know, you have some lead time going into the task or the problem or the project or whatever, cool. You know, take your time. Do your due diligence. Get as much information as you possibly can. Um, and, and, and manage your time well. Right, structure that and manage it well, so there's time for for action, and then there's time for revision, editing, and 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 tweaking, and and making sure that you're delivering the best product or or the best outcome that you possibly can, right? But make a decision, and sometimes you don't have that time. Sometimes in certain occupations and industries, um, you don't have that luxury of time. And that's fine. Make the best decision based on all the available information at the time. The totality of the circumstances will dictate what decision you make. And then, whatever that decision is, you own that. That is yours. Yours and yours alone. And that, that comes back to taking responsibility, right? You seek that responsibility. You, you have sought it out by making the decision. Now own it. You own that responsibility of whatever, whatever the outcome of that, right? And, and we, can, we can be the bitch and the moaner and, and the complainer and, and, and start getting into faults. Well, it's not my fault because of A, B, and C. Well, you're right. It might not be your fault, but it's damn well your responsibility, right? Fault and responsibility are two different things. Fault is, it's a waste of fucking time. You know, we, we can, again, we can sharpshoot and pinpoint and, 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 and nag and all that stuff. It's a waste of time. Take responsibility for that outcome Learn from it, right? Let that drive your training or your self-development or, or you know, whatever, you know, learning pipeline that, that you've created or that you're in and, and let, that, let that outcome of that decision drive the direction of your, your training, 
right? Or your development. Let that drive it. Because without it, there, there there is none, right? Without lessons, there is no self-development. Like, what, what are you going to do? Just pull something out of the air that's irrelevant? That's, you know, that's a crap shoot. So let it drive and dictate your training and, and, and your, your development and, and your lessons. Let those decisions do that. Make them. Without them, your training will be less effective, for sure. An employee work in accordance with its, uh, your work unit in accordance with its capabilities, right? Not everyone's the same, and you need to realize that. Your, whether you like it or not, right, your teammates have, more natural abilities in certain things than you do, right? People I work with have certainly have different capabilities than I do, right? Um, I need to recognize what mine are. And that comes back to doing that no shit self-assessment. If I'm looking at my team or even my, you know, my, my team leader, my frontline leaders, mid managers, all the way up to the top, Whether you want to admit it or not, there are aspects of their abilities that are just more effective than than ours. That's the way it is. You know, um, we're not going to go down the rabbit hole of equality and diversity and all that other stuff because, in in my opinion, um, the definitions that are out there in mainstream are are quite twisted okay but just understand that um on a logical rational level it, it, you know we're a natural species and we are not equal right we're we're just not so people have natural abilities that are more effective in different areas than mine and vice versa Right. And that's what makes teams teams, because if everyone's equal. Right. Whatever the average of the lowest common denominator is, that's the standard. Right. That's the standard. That's the ceiling. That's where we're at. That's what. Makes. Equality. Terribly illogical and ineffective. So. Just understand that people have more effective capabilities in different areas, right? Recognize that and recognize that if somebody is lacking in certain areas, offer the help, right? Offer a different perspective. Help them. All these things are a support to your leadership, right? Because at the end of the day, all these things help in us fulfilling the overall organizational goal, right? They all help with that. And these principles apply to people that are ineffective as leaders, or very effective as leaders, right? And, and you have to understand when, when, like, when we talk about like decentralized command, that means when we we take a step back and we distribute tasks to different groups and different people. And then allow them to perform those tasks, right? With minimal, with minimal oversight, right? We can take that approach in supporting our leaders, right? So if we kind of break off a little bit and try to get a bigger perspective, a bigger picture of how what left and right limits they have to work 
within. Then we have a better understanding of why they make the decisions they make and what their perspective may be. And then we can adjust accordingly. And it might just be that they're ineffective because they were moved up too quickly or that there really isn't a structure in place for having effective leaders. Maybe that there is um, different agendas in placing people where they are, right? From what I've seen, that sets up individuals for failure. It does. While they're doing that, more importantly, it sets, it sets up the organizational goal and mission statement for failure. Because objectives aren't clearly defined to get there. The, the structure just isn't there. The consistency, the communication, or the, the way people communicate isn't as consistent as it may be. Um, so what do you do? At the, at the end of the day, if, it, if it's that ineffective, well, then you're just supporting, you still need to support the overall organizational goal, right? You need to support the objectives. You need to support what we're trying to accomplish as a team. Does that make sense? That, that's exactly what we, we're looking to do, despite the individual in a position that is making decisions, right? Again, support the decision, and if it's ineffective, take that lesson and, and drive on. That doesn't mean you can't communicate, right? And, and and show, you know, your concern and so forth and so on. As long as it's respectful, respectful to the position, right? Because we we can respect the position without respecting the individual. If the individual is the individual, we have no control over that. As team members, what we have control over is. Our attitude, our commitment to the organizational goal, or the commitment to the teammates, the commitment to the objectives, right? We don't have to be necessarily committed to supporting an ineffective leader. If we have a belief in the organizational goal or the objectives, or a belief in the team, Right. If now my my purpose in the the career field I'm in is to ensure that my team is good, mind, body, spirit, that everyone goes home safely. If that's my purpose now, because I no longer really have a an understanding or a belief in the organizational goal or the mission statement or is very unclear and cloudy, then I'm going to do everything I can to support my teammates, right? In spite, in, in spite of whatever leadership is at the top, right? As long as I can step back, take a, take a good look and have a clear understanding or, or an understanding from my perspective as to where the leadership 
or the management or the administration is coming from, now I can adjust my approach based on those left and right limits. It's it's somewhat of a, a chess game, right? As far as finding um, finding purpose in, in in your career choice, and if you just can't find it, if it's just not there for you, and then it now becomes a a means to an end. If you're only there for the money and benefits, with nothing else, you don't give a fuck about your team, you don't care about the objectives, you don't care about the mission statement and all that, if there's just nothing there, right, there's nothing there on any human level that gives you a sense of purpose, gives you a reason to get up, pack your lunch, and get into work on time and, and, and do what you need to, that place really isn't for you, right? And I firmly believe this. If people, I've had discussions and people disagree with me, and, that, and that's all well and good. We're all entitled to our perspectives. But my perspective is this. I truly believe that people do not quit organizations, Right? Because there's, there's some redeeming qualities and, and benefits at, at any organization, right? Because the, I don't believe there's any organization that's like, you know what? I'm going to go out and recruit, recruit, you know, below average people. I'm going to go recruit below average talent and, and um, you know, we're, we're going to shoot for 50%. We're going to shoot for just average. I don't believe that. I think the, the competitive capitalistic market is... is is based upon, you know, being the best, right? We're a competitive, competitive social animal. And I think that's true in, in almost, or every field, right? So if you just don't find that there, people quit people, right? People quit people. They don't quit organizations, you can extract a silver lining in any freaking organization. You absolutely can. Whether it's money, time off, benefits, um, atmosphere, culture, um, whatever, whatever the personal gain might be for you, you can extract that anywhere, anywhere, if you're willing to put in the work, right? Um, you can definitely do that. But people quit people. So if you just don't find the atmosphere or the people there worth your support, then fucking leave, right? Just leave. It's going to be hard staying there. It's going to be hard leaving. It's going to be hard supporting an ineffective leader, and it's going to be hard supporting an effective leader. Everything is hard. Life is hard, right? Just, you know, get up and pick your fucking heart. It's just your wants, right? And we prior as human beings, we prioritize based on our, our wants, our most, whatever we want the most. That's what it comes down to. Um, if you don't want to support your leadership, don't. Don't don't support them. And then the fallout from that is going to be an incredibly ineffective team, right? Because that shit's more contagious than the positive person who will support the overall or support the leadership, right? You can support the leadership by supporting the overall organizational goal and supporting the overall mission, right? That indirectly supports leadership, whether it's effective or ineffective. And, and, th and that's all well and good. 
Um, but if you're not willing to support anything, leave, right? Leave. Somewhere, somehow down the line, somebody's going to pick up the slack, unfortunately. And, and that's, that's what it's going to come down to. If the squeeze is worth the juice for you, right? If your teammates and supporting your teammates means that much to you and you prioritize that, then supporting the overall mission might come with supporting an ineffective leader. Right? And that's one of the sacrifices that has to be made in order to support your team. It, it's all in, in what you prioritize. Right? But for us as effective teammates, effective, influential teammates and leaders, the organizational goal, once again, and we're going to keep hammering this home, the, organ, or the organizational goal, the mission statement, is first and foremost above anything and everything, right? That means petty disagreements with, with teammates, leadership, whatever, disagreements, um, gossip, any shit that you want to stir up, it, it's, it's totally above all that. Then the team itself, the team. Without the team, the mission statement doesn't get fulfilled. And then you, right? Without a, an effective you, there is no team. Without no team, again, there's no fulfilling of the mission statement. So lead self daily to support your leadership. Right. And if you don't want to directly support an ineffective leader, support the overall mission. Right. Support your teammates. That's going to indirectly support an ineffective leader. Right. But if you don't want to directly support them, that's cool, too. And if you don't want to support any of that, get the fuck out. Right. You're not good to anybody. And an effective team. Right. Not to go down this rabbit hole. But an effective team will weed people like that out, right? If they're structured properly and the right environment, attitude, and approach are established, it'll weed those people out. And, and that's all, it's all well and good, right? If people aren't sharing or don't have a general, consistent approach, right, and this is in general terms because when we get down to individuals, everybody's different and has different perspectives. But on general terms, if everyone's generally on the same page, the the outliers, right? The 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 outcasts, they they won't they just won't fit in, and and that's not necessarily bad. It's just different. They're different um, around a round peg in a square hole. And it's just not going to work. And that's cool, too. That's cool, too. But whatever it is that's going to be effective to support the team, and, and this is, I, I guess I should uh, take a step back here. For me, for me and where I am and, and, and where I stand in my profession, in my organization, in order for me to to serve my purpose, which is supporting my team, my teammates, and the people I work with, I have to support the objective of everyone going home. That's part, and that is part of the mission statement, right? That's part of the organizational goal, at least from my belief and my perspective. That's part of it. I have to believe that. Right. So for me to support that wholeheartedly, I have to directly support the effective leadership, right, and get behind it. And I indirectly support the ineffective leadership, right? Because if I'm going to play the game, I have to know all sides, right? I have to be somewhat proficient in all sides, even if it doesn't necessarily jive with my my approach right i have to understand where it's coming from in order for me to structure my approach moving forward so there we are 
um, supporting your leadership. Again, leadership is a very complex subject. It's a very complex genre, and, and nothing is easy. There, there are several dichotomies, and we can keep, you know, I use the term flipping the coin. We can flip the coin over and over all the time on these different subjects. There's always a different side of the coin. And that's infinite, infinite in my opinion. So um, we try to keep it simple. We try to keep the approach simple. Um, you know, as the year comes winding down, um, you know, it's not a bad time of the year to reflect on the your effectiveness and or ineffectiveness throughout the year. And then, you know, maybe sit down and self-assess and see, see if you are, you know, first and foremost, supporting yourself, then supporting your team, the organization, right? And, and see how that kind of jives and interacts with the organizational goal, the team, and yourself. Um, so, yeah. Um, so that's about it for today. I appreciate everyone listening. And we'll see you on the next one. I want to thank everyone for listening to this week's episode of Fido Talk with Dave Thompson. If you would, please subscribe and review. It helps a lot. Uh, share the word with your friends and family. Have them check it out and provide some feedback. We'd love to hear it. Check us out at barebonesleadership.com for the latest blog and different perspectives on everything leadership. Follow us on the gram and on our newly updated Facebook page. Uh, share your comments, your thoughts, your views. Any and all feedback is always welcome. And don't forget, keep kicking those fucking doors in, and as always, Fido. I appreciate you guys listening. Take care, and see you next time. <laughs>